All right, guys, we're here at Jordan J's house, and uh, he's going to take us on a studio tour and uh, explain how he made Drive Me Home. All right, let's go. To the very first studio episode of At Last Artist. I'm here in the studio with Jordan J, who's gonna explain us how he made Drive Me Home. That's right. All right, let's get to it. I'll uh, show you guys what it sounds like first. So I uh, want to start off by uh, telling you how I started out. All right. Um, and then just gradually build up like pretty much how I, how I build up the, the whole song. Yeah. All right. So uh, I start off with the kick. I usually just make a nice little house beat and then start adding my stuff on it. Cool. Um, what kind of kick are you using? This is a kick that I pretty much use in like most songs. It's a... Uh, I can't remember what sample pack it was from. I believe it was literally straight out of the gate. It was just straight out of the sample pack, just whacked it in there. All right. And then, uh, and then this that just became my signature kick because I used it in Never Know. I used it in well this song. I used it in pretty much all my songs because it's uh, it's a super powerful kick. It's like it has a lot of body, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really sit in the way of your bass line, which sure. is which is good because it's not that long, but the the length that it has, it's very powerful, so. Cool. Any processing that you use on the kick? No, nothing. Literally straight out of the box, you just put it in there and, uh, wow. and just went, went with it, yeah. All right. Um, sometimes I pitch it a little bit, but usually pitching a kick just takes out the power of it. And in dance, that's very important. Sure. Um, so after that, I, I added a clap on it, which is uh, nice to get the top end in. I don't really put it too loud, but just a simple kick, simple clap on the kick. Uh, then I added the claps, which uh, which creates the simple house beat. And then I like to add my effects. It's, usually I start with a little bit of noise. In this one, I actually used uh, a whole down lifter, which is like, which sounds like this. But usually I, um, I just use the, um, like a, a quick, a little noise hit basically like this but in this one I, I felt like it needed a little bit more of the noise so I just kept going with it. It's actually a little bit like rhythmic which is funny because usually a lot of people just use their noise like they use an exhaust basically like mm -hmm. they use it as a crash basically which is yeah, sure. what's a little bit different with What's funny is that it, it, it really makes it sound like a festival song. And, yeah. you know, for anybody out there that doesn't know, you created this as the anthem to Animal Sounds Festival, yeah, right? exactly. So I wanted it to be uh, a song that you can listen to. It's like an easy listening song, but still, you could still go hands in the air, feet, up, feet off the floor and just dance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a festival song. Exactly, sure. yeah. So then I added another little effect just to make the first hit more powerful. Um, let's see, I had another, I got, I got all these little, like, they're all, a lot of these effects are tonal, mm -hmm. which means that they're pitched to fit the rest of the melody or fit the rest of the key or fit the rest of the song. Basically, that's, that sort of stuff. So, um, I add a little bit more. I like to add bass, uh, layers. Sometimes it's a plugin like Serum Synthesizer. Sometimes it's, uh, it's just a sample. This one came from Serum, but this one was already in the old project, which I started with. I also added just like a focal chop, but it's just more like an emphasis thing. Like it's more like a fill rather than a melody, basically. It's just like this. Um, and I put that throughout the whole drop, basically. Just as like the little fill things, I like to add small fills, whether it's percussion or effects or anything, just to make the rhythm 
stand out more and make it more special. Same thing goes for like the woo <laughs> sort of stuff, you know? And for this one, I feel like the rhythm is pretty, is still pretty straightforward uh, because it's easier to go jump and hands in the air, you know, like a festival song, yeah. if, if it's not too complex. If it grooves too hard, if there's too much things going on in, in the groove, then it's harder to like be like, you know, hands in the air. Yeah, I mean, everybody just wants to jump on it. Yeah, I guess. just like with all the like big room festival songs, they worked so well because they didn't even have a clap. Yeah. Like, it's just like literally just kick, yeah. So that's uh, that's why I went for a little bit simpler rhythm. But the rhythm does come back in the synths, um, which is the next thing I want to talk about. I um, The synths are pretty simple. In this one, I just used one super saw uh, from Silent. And on the processing, it's, I got one glitch, which actually gives it like a tape stop. Okay. Um, which Can is you show it to us without tape stop effects and with? Yeah, of course. So with uh, without the tape stop, it sounds like this. And with the tape stops like this. Yeah. So it just like pitches down and slows it down. It's basically what a tape stop effect yeah. is. And it's just OTT, the old trusty OTT, which is an upward downward compression plugin, which is one of the best plugins, I think, to like make it a sound stand out more. Yeah. It just makes it it makes it sound more electronic, but it makes it more powerful. So it's, there's just one layer of chords and the fun a fun trick that I use on these chords is the reverb automation. I, I use Fall Room and then it's basic settings. I um, I automate mix on it to make it the uh, reverb go up mm -hmm. whenever it doesn't play or or straight to another uh, another note. Yeah, that's so, uh, automation that you see on the screen. Yeah, right? so without the chords and without the melody it sounds like this. <laughs> And then uh, with the chords, it already sounds like this. So basically, the chords just give it a lot more dimension. Yeah, and you can already hear the melody a little bit too. Yeah, that's mostly because the yeah the melody is based off of most of the uh, notes that are in the chords. Yeah. So that's why you can obviously yeah that's correct. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the melody. Um, I use three layers, two VPS Avengers and one Silent. Uh, this one's pretty much the main layer. Processing-wise, there's not really much going on. You can see that I experimented with OTT and like some distortion, but I turned it off in the end. So um, I love distortion. I love putting it on my sounds and makes it way better. Usually. But if you don't need it. But if you don't need it, don't use it. And VPS is just such a complete plugin. Some of these presets already have like some, there's already distortion on it. There's already bit crushing on it. So yeah. it did, just didn't need anything more. So that's more like the main sound. The second one is more like a, like a plug. It gives it some more attack. Uh, just makes the lead stand out a little bit more. Uh, and the next one is the detune sound, uh, which is way more just to layer it up and make it sound um, more, fuller. yeah, like fuller, but also more stereo because detune works in a way where it just sounds more stereo. Uh, and all together, it sounds like this. And a very nice trick that I used is um, all these sounds I put for hollow room on it, which is very basic settings, and um, I automated it so the sound is like the reverb comes up before the next note hits. Which is so basic. you kind of get like a reverse reverb. I almost, guess. yeah. Almost, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's almost what it is. That's essentially what it is. But I just feel like with this, it goes way much quicker. And I like to do it this way. Yeah. All right. Show <laughs> um, us. So it sounds like this. It just feels like it gets like the sound gets sucked into, and then yeah. it feels more powerful when you when it actually. Played, so. Yeah, it, it kind of builds up towards the next step. Yeah, exactly. And it just fills up the empty spaces, just makes it like, yeah, I just like, I really like uh, using this uh, this technique. Um, and together with the chords, it sounds like this. Another very important thing that I forgot with the chords actually is the pitch automation, which I really like doing, which is actually a signature move of me, basically. All right. 
um, which I do in every, almost every song. I like to do the quick chord steps with some pitch automation to make it out. Uh, well, I'll just show you. It's basically like, um, makes everything more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a little trick to make everything more interesting. If you turn it off, especially at the quick chords right here, it's just dull. So that just makes it much more interesting. Layered with uh, my signature sound, which is actually more layers, uh, I, al I always do the same trick on that signature sound. And this one I made it in another project because um, there's like a couple layers and all the effects and automation that I put on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better for CPU to just export the MIDI into the other project, bounce out the stem from it and then just put it back in the project. So that one sounds like this. And then together with the, with the chords, it sounds like this. And then that just made uh, that just made it much more me, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I like to put that sound in every single song of mine. It doesn't have to be the main sound in every song, but it, I like I like to have it at least as a layer. And um, yeah, so it's just to give it the signature, signature Jordan yeah, J. Yeah, give it that Jordan J. touch. You know, that's. Uh, that's what I love doing. Cool. Show us everything together. So everything together. Okay, so the next part and essentially the last big part is the bass lines. And the bass lines are consisting of three layers and a sub. I always like to do my sub separately because that just makes everything, uh, you have much more control over all of the sounds. Sure. Uh, so what I did with the, with the bass is I did three basses, made them, um, made, uh, EQ'd pretty much all the highs, the top highs and a lot of the bass. So it's like a bass with not that much bass <laughs> in it really. But it's a layer that uh, just makes everything more alive. So to give it a little more texture. I yeah, guess. exactly. So the sounds are actually pretty uh, aggressive. Yeah. If you if you uh, you could say that they're aggressive. The first layer sounds like this. And the second layer sounds like this. And the third layer sounds like this. So they're all pretty aggressive bass lines, especially if I turn off that EQ. They're pretty, pretty powerful basses. I put every single one in the same mixer channel. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is that it just, there wasn't a necessary reason. Like it, it wasn't necessary to put them in separate channels, so I just don't do it. You wanted to do the same processing, processing tool. Yeah, exactly. So the same way I could do it is put them all in separate channels and then bust them together and then put the effects on there. Yeah. That's how you do it in most other DAWs because they don't have uh, a separate channel and a mixer channel. Yeah. They just have a channel, an SSR mixer channel, like yeah. Logic or Ableton or something. Um, but with me, uh, that makes that process actually makes a lot of my projects like a bit more messy. Yeah. But it also gives you more control of everything. Okay, so the basses together with everything else except the sub. Uh, you're missing that super low end. Mm -hmm. You have it in the kick, but you're missing the the sub. You're missing it so hard. Uh, but first, I want to show you before I show you how to how to make the sub. Uh, I want to show you the the basses and the chords together, because okay. because they're um, they essentially have the same rhythm. Okay. Which means that they work together as a, sort of like a layer. So um, just the bass and then the chords. Where, that's why I, I uh, like to do it like that, because um, the, then your bass has a, the same rhythm as the chords. Uh, what other people do, a lot of songs I hear, they're just their bass is just straightforward, or it's a completely different thing. Then it gets super messy. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I like to do. I like to 
it's actually a good tip, I think, that if you put a lot of notes on each other, mm -hmm. um, even if they're completely different elements or different sounds, um, the same goes for like rhythmic stuff. You put them on the notes instead of in between the notes yeah. to make it a layer fill, basically, instead of a, a separate thing. Because then yeah. it sounds like it's a separate thing and then it becomes super messy. Mm -hmm. That's why I like to keep my rhythms tight. Tight. Yeah, yeah, tight, so to speak. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is the sub bass, and the sub bass is literally just like call it's called bass master three. <laughs> Some <laughs> preset that I used. Um, uh, I literally there was it sounds like a master bass, um, but I put on some effects. It's just EQing all the high and. There's two ways to make a sub bass basically. Okay. Uh, you can do a sine wave, and then just pitch it down, make a very low sine wave, that's a sub bass, or a triangle, or whatever. But another wave can also have a sub frequencies, you can use that. Um, but using that, you also have high frequencies, because they're different waves. Sure. But then you can... Uh, EQ it. Yeah, you can EQ those waves, take them out again, and then you'll be left with essentially a, uh, a sine wave, but it comes from a saw wave, or in this case, Square saw. Well, if this makes sense to you, give us a thumbs up. If if it doesn't make sense at all, comment down below. Jordan J will get back to you. I'll explain everything <laughs> when the time when the time is right. No, so so that's you you'll get a different texture if you if sure, you use yeah. a different wave, even though you get essentially somewhat the same the same frequencies. And that's why I like doing that because it's uh it just makes it a little bit less generic. Yeah, basically. sure. Uh, and then I added just a kickstart for the sidechain. That's what I use for all my sidechain, by the way. Mm -hmm. I like using just kickstart. Sometimes I turn down the mix if I want stuff to stand out. If I really want it to be bouncy, then mm -hmm. I would just keep it at 100%. So you don't actually use a sidechain, you just use uh, kickstart to put it in a... Yeah. With house, it's it's easier because all the all the beats are on the one, two, three, four. They're, yeah, on, the, sure. they're on the grid. Um, if I use if I make a pop song with a different uh, with a different rhythm, where I want different things sidechain at different times, then I use uh, sidechain compressions. But okay. it, it has a different level of control. I think I think yeah. this has more control. And um, it's super simple. And it's so simple. And then to combat the uh, to make it, I don't know why I put the sausage fat in there after the kickstart, but it's probably <laughs> something that I did because I liked it. What it essentially does, it takes down the mix, mix knob. Yeah. Because it, the parts that are lower, it, it makes them more present again. So it like, kind of is a weird thing to do, but <laughs> it works. So, you know. Sometimes it just works. Yeah, yeah right. So, you got to go with what, what works. Exactly. So that's why I did it. And uh, so the bases together sound like this. everything together again. So uh, another cool thing that I added in the second um, second part of the drop is this melody thing, which actually has a different melody than the other one, um, just to keep it interesting and uh, add another layer. It's just a, an extra sound that I like to uh, incorporate, just to keep it interesting. And then also in the second part of the drop, I have uh, this hi-hat, which opens up um, this riser. To make it even more festival. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's how I made the drop for driving me home. You can drive me home. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you like Jordan J, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. 
and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.